Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Dyson Sphere program update. And last week I think I made quite a lot of progress. I technically completed the game, which felt like quite an achievement. And as you can see, I've done quite a lot more building on my Dyson Sphere. In fact, let's let's switch over to the um, the actual Dyson Sphere view properly so we can see see how this is getting on. So I've planned out everything all the way out to whatever angle this is, presumably 30 degrees. So as you can see, we've got quite a lot of um, space so far yet to be actually built up. And the rockets are still coming out. So there's places like this one that have had 130 of their 170 constructed. And apparently that's not enough to get all of this built up. There are other ones like this one down here, which I've seen none so far. And that needs 300 in total. But then there are also ones like this that are finished. So we're working gradually towards this. And these, these are built up, in case you've forgotten from, a pre from previous episodes. These are built up by launching out the rockets that I've been building up. And then all this area in between is then filled in once there's a uh, once there's a node in place you can then start to fill it in by ca by passing over solar sails and so if we look inside if we look here you can see the uh, the, the dyson swarm is actually fairly uh, fairly sparse compared to the way it was earlier and looking over here you can see there's this massive gap across the middle and this is because we managed to get a certain amount of the um, of these nodes up and built in there towards the end of the last stream and so when when you've got a node built at least to the stage that this one is built where the, uh, the the node itself appears. You don't need to get all of the struts appearing out of it. Once you get to that stage, it will then build out all of the solar sails that are closer to closer to that node than any other. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think it's probably approximately that. So you can see this one has been built, so it's then filled in this area here. This one has been built, so it's filled in this area down here. But these two haven't been made yet, so it hasn't been able to fill in this area or this area or any of this area around here. So gradually, we are pulling the solar cells in from the uh, from the Dyson Swarm into the Dyson Sphere, and that's what. And so when you when you do that, it pulls in the newest ones first, and then we'll gradually work back through through older and older and older ones until it's got enough. And so that was this entire gap here. Once um, it's managed to pull all of those out, but since then, we've now got enough in the in the um, in the swarm in in the, um, in the in the in the shell that we don't need to bring any more out for the time being. So that means that we've started putting them back into the sail again, which is a good thing, uh, the, the swarm again, which is a good thing because we currently only have 70% 70, 70 satisfaction on the power. Now, the big difference you'll notice here is that um, is that the, um, the Dyson shell, that's this dark blue line around here, is now producing most of the power that's being generated. That's, that's, that's more than 50% of it. If we look down here, we're, we're wanting five, just over 5 gig gigawatts, and we're producing from that, we're producing just over 3. So yes, we're definitely producing more than half of what's required from the Dyson shell, um, and then only another sort of 667 megawatts from the, uh, from the Dyson swarm. And this is because when you when you pull the uh, solar sails out of the Dyson Swarm, put them into the shell, I believe they then start producing half the power they were producing before, which is a bit unfortunate and drops the uh, amount of power you're gener able to generate down quite significantly as you as you start to pull them all out. Hence this uh, this low satisfaction score here. But they will then last forever. They don't fall out of the sky like the uh, like the ones that are in the in the um, in the sh in the swarm do. So in the long run, it, it it's a good thing. And as you can see, we are adding them in, still adding them in nice and quickly here. There's a steady stream of them coming in from Silly that are being added into the swarm. But there's also a steady stream coming out of the swarm to go into the shell. So we've we've hit a sort of a, a balance point in that there's a decent number available in the, in the swarm, and I think that's and yeah that's definitely going to be growing. And once these disappear and we start to just uh, fill it, essentially fill in this gap by moving this patch across this way, then this this satisfaction level here should go up quite quickly. And I think we'll very very soon have more pa more power than we know what to do with. So. The goal is, of course, to get the uh, Dyson shell to the point where it's providing all of the power I need. We're not there yet. We're only at about sort of 60% of the way to that so far. But we are heading in the right direction. It's gone up a lot from the way where it was before. So, yes, things are going well. Um, my, uh, there's been a distinct lack of any sort of artistic, well, anything here, um, because, well, the uh, the way you build Dyson spheres is a little bit funny. So you've got this system where it's on it's on a, it's on a square grid, which is a little bit odd for a sphere anyway. Um, and you don't really get you don't really get the lines of latitude in the same way. Uh, sorry, the lines of uh, the tropics lines the way you do when you're building on planet. So you don't get that to help you and pr produce a sort of an, an even consistent uh, design. There are a couple of other. Um, ways you can look at it. You can have this grid, but that's too big to, well, really do anything with, I think. Although maybe next time, maybe next time I'd start on a grid like this. Or you can have this grid, which again, much too big, and actually this one's um, somewhat square as well, and all all of the joins are 90 degrees. Um, oh, actually, you do get a subgrid inside that's triangular, so maybe that would be a one, one to work with. In fact, with this one, 
Yeah, may, actually, maybe this would be quite a good grid to work with. This, this would be. This is what I should probably have used, and I might have been able to come up with something that looked a bit like a football. Um, or you've got this one, which is tr sort of a triangular um, version of the previous one. So, yeah, with the with these with the sort of internal subgrids, then yes, maybe I could have done something useful with this. Oh well, never mind. I mean, that said, I could switch over to one of these for the top parts of the um, of the, and top and bottom parts of the sphere. That would be a possibility. And as it is, I've I've not quite got all of the research done to allow me to build all the way up to the top yet. So you can, you can see where the line goes from green to red here. That's as high as I'm I can currently build. There is a research up. Here, here. Uh, I've got to. I've done the first four of these, and each time you do another one, you get an extra nudge out of an extra 15 degrees that you can build out to. So it takes 6,000 of all the science packs, though, so it's fairly expensive. Speaking of science packs, let's talk about that for a moment. When when I say talk about, I mean let's fly halfway around the planet in order to get to the place where I can actually look at it in order to talk about it. So here's my here's my bus. It's going quite nicely. Um, with mini sun, nice. So over here, yes, this is the uh, this is the science area that we we've, we've seen many times before, and we're pulling in all of the science packs as you can see. We're now also pulling in these this black stuff, which is antimatter, and the stack of let's see which way around did I arrange this? Right, yes, this stack in the middle is doing my science. So science has been slowed down a bit because we're down to um, a single stack of it doing uh, working on it. Although I did make the stack slightly taller. The stacks to either side are making white science packs, and that takes one of each of all of the other science packs and some antimatter to generate a white science pack. And these are all painted, of course, so I've got a productivity bonus going on over there as well. And this is where the power shortage is showing up a little bit, so we've only got 90-something percent power, and so it's not ideal. But it's um, it's working almost, almost as fast as it should. So, yes, that means I'm making white science packs, which means I can do all of the sciences now. And so because I've got those, that's allowed me to do. Where is it? This is the upgrade. It's allowed me to do this science over here, the the, the absolute final mission complete science. So I've com I have technically completed the game because I I, can, I did this one. And to be honest, I'm not going to call it an anti climax um, because it was still it was it was something I've been working towards and working towards and working towards. But once I got to this point, it was actually very very easy to get from not having done this science this 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 research to having done it. But doing the um, Doing the, the antimatter took a little bit of effort, but making the uh, doing the actual mission complete, finishing the game challenge was only 4,000 science packs. So I knocked that one on the head pretty quickly. However, I do intend before I before I actually call it before I could actually call it complete, I intend to do all of the science researches. If we find infinite ones, then I'll do at least one of each infinite one. But basically, all of the science researches, which means I need to do at least two or three more of these, and I need to go in through here and do all of these upgrades, which is what I'm currently working on. Um, there's not too many of them, so I don't think it'll take that long. But also, I want to com complete my first Dyson Sphere. So I want this one to be completely finished, a full sphere with all of the solar sails in it, all of it running, and generating silly, silly amounts of power. Because it's going to produce about four times the amount of power I need, I reckon. Because if what I've got at the moment is producing 70%, I reckon filling in all the gaps around here will probably double the amount of power I'm generating. And then putting the lids on either side, I think will um, e each of those will be another of the amount I've already got. So I think I'm going to have about four times the amount of power I've got at the moment when I finally finish it. But that's going to be some way off because, as you can see, there's a lot of building to do here. Um, there's a lot of stuff required. The limiting factor at the moment seems to mostly be these rockets that are coming out. Although I suspect that if I launch them much faster, then the limiting factor would start to be the uh, the, Dyson, the, uh, the solar sails being launched. So, yeah, there's a um, a lot to do. But I think it's all stuff. I, it's all stuff I've already done to an extent, so it shouldn't be too hard to continue. So, somewhere on this planet, I am making antimatter. Um, this is going to be hard to find, so uh, please bear with me. Okay, this is not antimatter, but this is no, no, nonetheless this is this is interesting and worth having a look at. So this is I am um, in the last stream and then an episode. I told you all about how I was having massive shortages of deuterium. So I went out to the um, the big the big gas giant to put down a lot more um, collectors, and that allowed me to gather a little bit more deuterium, sort of naturally, just pulling it out of the uh, the gas giant. So that was nice. But also it allowed me to have massive massive quantities of hydrogen. So that has filled up this um, this tower over here, and I managed to fill it up with deuterium as well. But then I've started converting a lot of that hydrogen into deuterium as well, because, well, there wasn't enough of it, basically. You, you can't gather enough of it from the gas giants, I don't think. There just isn't enough of it there, and you then completely overwhelm your hydrogen production as well. So this is another massive field of the, um, of the dis distillation columns. 
And as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm feeding out... Let's turn the camera around. There we go. Feeding out four belts. And these are all blue... Everything is blue belts here because I want to just get lots and lots passed through. And with the uh, and with these fractionated columns, the more of it you pass through, and the faster you pass it through, the more comes out. So there's no limit on how fast the machines can run. It's just on how fast you can chuck the hydrogen in the back of them. So we've got four of these belts coming out. They're all being stacked up to two, then joined. And so we've got full belts of... Um, double stacked along here, then stacking them again here to quad stacks and joining them again. So this should here, this here should be a complete full quad stack of um, of, deuter of, of hydrogen coming being passed through. That then goes through an enormous number of the uh, the fractionated columns and it just, this belt just snakes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way through all of these. And as you can see, when it whenever it does actually move, a certain amount of deuterium is produced and that does eventually fairly quickly jam up this belt because we're not actually using all that much deuterium this is a, this is rather overkill so the tower is full so we can't feed any more in so the belt stops and there's some spectacular spaghetti going on here <laughs> but let's 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 not pay attention to that for the moment we'll come back and, and glory in that afterwards but because of the way this works, because it's about the uh, the hydrogen moving through the uh, the distillation columns rather than the hydrogen being taken up by them and used and then and then destroyed, you do get a certain amount of it being passed all the way through. He says, watching for any to get passed all the way through. So you can see along here that it's just flowing through, flowing through, flowing through, and eventually you get to the point where some of it will make it through and eventually will come out of the other end. Now, there's, I think each individual tower has a something like a 1% chance of turning the hydrogen that goes through it into a deuterium, and that means some of it will eventually come out of the end. And it then goes into the splitter here, which allows it to fit into, go into these two tanks. And the idea of these tanks is they're, they're just there to act as a buffer, because anything that then comes out of there is then fed into these stackers, and then through here, where again, in theory, then gets passed round. It gets then gets passed round again. Now, my original design just had it going straight back into the tower, but the problem was the tower has a habit of overloading, and um, and, for, and 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 we, so the tower will get filled up completely by these spaceships stocking it up, and then you won't be able to get any more in from these belts. So everything jams up and it stops working. Now, the problem with this is you then get all this hydrogen coming through and you don't have, and with the back pressure levels that it has initially, you don't have any back pressure and therefore these stackers don't actually stack. So all this is single stack, single high stacks, which completely spoils the system. Um, uh, and, and anyway, it's coming along from there and it's then being fed back into these splitters down here because it should be double stacked because of all of these stackers. But as I say, if you don't have back pressure on stackers, they don't stack. So they won't hold on to something and wait for the next thing to come in and put another one on top of it. They only go, oh, I can't output this and there's another one coming in immediately. All right, I'll stack them up. Which is a bit frustrating because it causes, it means you have to do all kinds of weird shenaniganry like this rather than just getting, rather than just being able to stack up in a straight in a straight line. Um, but in theory, this should allow me to pass all of the hydrogen back through. And now I'm starting to have second thoughts about this. Because with it, with it, um, with it buffering in here, and then you then getting that big flurry of single high stack coming through, it means that then at that point, when that does come through, you're only getting single high stacks going through here, and that's why it was flowing quite so much and not not actually coming out the other end, which meant the machines weren't all working to their maximum efficiency. So that's unfortunate and causes problems. So what I'm thinking is maybe I should actually have these buffering and then pass it back into the uh, in, into the into the tower, which is what I originally had. But my th th thought is, if I have a buffer as well, then I th think it might be okay. I think the buffer might then allow me to feed it back into the tower before, um, without without any problems, because. The belts do take priority over anything that's being brought in by spaceship or by bot, um, because they, uh, because the as soon as it drops one, basically as soon as this number drops one below the max, you can feed it in from a belt. But it has to drop 60 below the max for it to come in by drone, or several hundred below the max for it to come in by spaceship. So I think actually that might be a better way of doing it. And and so if I feed these two belts from here, instead of having them going into some of these the splitters over here and being added in there, but with a priority obviously, I could feed them over here and just put them into the back of the tower. And I think that would also prioritise it quite well. And then we'd def and then we'd have this system over here doing the stacking. So I think that's going to be an improvement I I may or may not make. And the thing is, it's not vital uh, for my for the system here. This is basically this is working well enough. And as you can see, we have crazy crazy amounts of deuterium and hydrogen. We've got no problems with supply here whatsoever. So it only comes down to whether I want to make the system run slightly faster, slightly more efficiently. Um, and at the moment, 
it's it's okay. As you can see, yes, a massive massive backlog of deuterium, and we aren't we aren't over we aren't overfilling these these uh, with these tanks. So my system of prioritization over here does work. We're not overfilling the uh, well, and yeah. So it is it is working, and we have enough deuterium. So it is working. I'm just wondering what what's that going over here? That's the things that keep yeah flying up and then dropping back down again. Are those oh there'll be rocket launches that are flying up into the air like that. And then going, oh wait, I need to go in the other direction. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> the rocket launch is taking off and then curling and then going. I'm going to, I'm going to tell myself they're using a gravity assist to go around the planet and then launch them to, to launch themselves off in the correct direction for the, um, uh, for, for the sphere because um, <laughs> it's kind of, a, it, it kind of breaks physics a little bit doing it like that. But I suppose then they're all using deuterium fusion engines of some sort or another. So. Uh, that also is something we haven't really developed in the real world, so I can't comment on that too strongly. <laughs> right, after much searching, and I, I have <laughs> one of my one of the problems I have with this game is that because it's on a sphere, I don't have a, as good a, a feel for where things are around around the world as I do in Factorio, which is on two which is on a 2D map and always orientated the same way up, so I can learn that um, I don't know the antimatter is northwest of the um, of, of, of the bus or something like that. Whereas on this, because it's a sphere and it gets spun around a lot, and I'm still not 100% sure which is north and south. It's just I I, I have difficulties with it, and it's just it does it, my my brain struggles. <laughs> so yes, over here, I needed to make I needed to make antimatter as I showed you for the white science packs. So what we've got here is one tower that's bringing in uh, apparently coal. Oh no, no, it, there's a mine here that's generating coal. It's also bringing in lenses. Those lenses are being fed out into these dishes along here. And these dishes are running in the alternative mode. So the, the dishes have two, two ways they can run. They can either be generating power or rather bringing in power, having it beamed down to them from the uh, Dyson shell and the Dyson swarm. Or they can be running in a mode where they ex where they produce excitable photons or something similar, some something with a vaguely similar name. And that's these glowing boxes that you can see coming out here. So we've got them running in that mode, and that need and that I don't think it needs the lenses, but it's more efficient and more effective, if and more productive. They, they produce more of them if you have those. So these come trundling along here like this. Um, I've got a box to store them in in case we get an overload, um, because I was sort of expecting these to to run more more effectively when the sun is up than when it isn't. So I thought we'll have a bit of a buffer in there. We've then got two of these um, miniature particle colliders, and these are taking in those excitable photons and produce and turning them into antimatter. That antimatter is then being fed out into this tower, where there is not very much of it. So this is a bit of a a, a, um, a, th a, th a throughput issue at the moment for doing the science, I imagine. <clears throat> we'll see how bad a throughput issue it is in a, in a moment, but um, it's currently a little bit tricky. But it also produces a little bit of hydrogen that we need to get rid of, but that seems to be going okay. We're getting rid of that quite happily. Um, so those, yes, yeah, so we're taking in the excitable photons, putting them into, into, into the box, then into these machines. They're making them into antimatter and a bit of hydrogen. The uh, antimatter is then getting taken away and brought... Oh, it's only just over here. Okay, no wonder I had trouble finding it. That's brought over and put into the tower here because there was space there. And as you can see, we don't really have very much of it available. Um, if When we start doing white science at a rate, it's I think that number is probably going down. Yeah, that looks like it's going down to me. So I think one of the things I'm going to need to do next time is put in a bit more antimatter production because that's just not fast enough. We're um, we're getting we're getting through the supplies a little bit. Or alternatively, I could start just doing all of the researches that don't require yet, uh, white science and let it build up. So there's 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 ways and means around that. The other thing that's a big shortage at the moment is if we go if we find the uh, the rocket launch area again, and that should be easy to find because it's got all of these yes, all of these launch silos flinging rockets out into space. So that's that's an e one of the easier things to find, and it's a lot bigger than the um, uh, than the antimatter production area as well. So over here, I mean, this is going reasonably well. There's a steady flow of rockets coming along here. However, we have a big problem here with the bucky sheets, and that we have none of them. Um, <clears throat> okay, and processes as well. There's okay. There's 800 from being brought in, but as soon as they arrive, bloop, they're mo oh, loads of them get claimed by other uh, other things on this planet. That's that's uh, kind of horrific. And then all the rest of them just pour straight out onto the onto the belt here. So and they're, they're gone in a, in a matter of seconds. So we need to massively increase the bucky sheet production. That's a problem. And it turns out we also need to massively increase the processor and also the blue processor production. That's um, and that <clears throat> we might find that the blue processor production is limited by the number of processors available. So, but still, the, the, these are problems, and especially as they're not actually being built on this planet. Oh, the blue processors are—they're being built here. Yes, here. 
why are you having why are you struggling these are slow these, because these are slow because, um, okay now this is these aren't these aren't struggling because of any um, any particular input problems they just don't they just don't produce the, the stuff I need quite fast enough so maybe there's a um, yeah these belts are running quite slowly and, and seem to be fairly backlogged I um, actually no they're not they're running fairly steadily uh, there is a shortage of bucky sheets coming in here so maybe that's why there's a, sh a shortage on this belt I don't know this is going to be something I'm gonna to have to go and have a look at but it seems like the bucky sheets are the uh, the core problem for this and bucky sheets are being made off in the dim and distant uh, solar system of Targaryen which is that one <clears throat> unfortunately I can't zoom in and have a look at it I'll have to show you next time because this this one over here there's a the, over here oh, I can, I can sort of view it actually so we can look at it like this so over here in Targaryen we have um, these planets over here so one of these is producing oh, I can't remember it's no the spiniform stalagmite crystals are for making the bucky tubes I think and the fire ice is for making bucky sheets so I went out to um, to to uh, Rhaegar and I um, I built up a load of yeah I can't zoom in on it and have I actually have a look at it and I built up a system uh, on here for building the making the bucky sheets and that very quickly produced far more than I needed so I went okay <clears throat> we've got lots of these I'll turn some of them into bucky tubes because I need lots of those and there's lots of lots and lots of the uh, sheets available here and from sheets to tubes is only one extra step and that was a fairly easy one I think maybe it required titanium I suspect and that was on this planet as well however it now turns out we need the bucky sheets a lot faster than I was um, prepared to deal with. So I'm going to have to come out here again, I think, um, and put in more uh, more fire ice processing to turn those into a lot more bucky sheets um, so we can get those being shipped out. Now, is there anywhere else around here that has fire ice? Maybe Viserys. Viserys also has 2 million fire ice. So, yeah, it might be worth coming out here, getting both of these planets producing the bucky sheets at quite a rate. Do you have any fire ice? You do not. Okay, so maybe getting getting those two going. I could also consider going out looking at some of these other stars. So um, this one has fire ice. It has two million fire ice, so that's a possibility. It's not a huge amount, but it's at least some. This one's got six million. So I think this one, Precipua, uh, would be a good one to come out to because here we've got yeah six, almost seven million fire ice. So if we can go out here, drop onto it. Is it all on one planet? That's the other question. Oh, we've got a gas giant pair in, pair down there. This one up here has this. No, this this one has all of the fire ice there. So this one, what, what, have, you, what have you got? Oh, this one's got 17 million coal. So th it's a jungle satellite as well. That all sounds awesome. I, I kind of want to go there just for that. So it might be worth coming out here and and, ta and starting to dig up all this coal because I know I'm getting through lots and lots of coal. So having a supply of it coming from off planet would be very, potentially be very very useful. Um, so yeah, I think that that would be a good idea. Let's come out and let's so let's come out to Precipua. Let's harvest all of this fire ice and turn it into um, turn it into bucky sheets because that we need those and just harvest all of this coal and just make it available to be taken away and used wherever it's needed. That sounds like a lot of that sounds like a very good idea. It will solve a lot of my supply problems and hopefully get things up and rolling a bit faster. And then I can look to see where the next um, resource problem is because there'll, 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 there'll always be another one because the idea of these games is you build up you build up your resources, you start using them and then you start then you realize you're using them faster and you're digging them up. So you start digging them up a bit faster and then you realize you're um you're you're digging them up to sorry. You're, then you realise that you're digging them up fast enough, so you're not you're not actually using them up quickly enough. So you put in a bit more uh, production in, uh, in order to use up all of that excess, and then you realise you're short of supplies again. So it's, it's that sort of never-ending loop. But as you do that, your your factory gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You produce more and more stuff faster and faster, and eventually you finish a Dyson sphere, or at least in this game you eventually finish a Dyson sphere. <laughs> um, yeah, there it is. It's, it's coming together nicely. So yes, that's that's all going quite well. Um, so yes, the, oh, the other reason I want to go out and start having a look at, um, at mining uh, at mining on other planets is because I've got a new toy that I haven't really had the opportunity to play with. So one of the researches I did was for making the new type of mining drills that everyone's been telling me are absolutely fantastic. So I'd like to investigate them. These advanced mining machines. Um, apparently they're really, really good. Um, you can get 90 per minute per vein out of the out of the ground, whereas these are only 45, so they're twice as fast. I think they have a bigger area of effect. So, yeah, these seem interesting. I'd like to give them a try. I think I have a few in my inventory. I do not have a few in my inventory, but I would like to give them a try because they see that apparently they're exciting and interesting. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what they're like. I've also just researched this artificial star thing, which um, presumably turns... Um, 
I was going to say presumably turns antimatter into energy, but actually I'm not sure. Maybe it just turns. Maybe maybe you use antimatter when you're making it, and it just produces energy. I'm not quite sure. It's clearly a power system, power generating system. I'll have to make one and then put it down, have a look at it, see what it does. But what are these things? Annihilation constraint spheres. Okay. Um, I suspect this is going to take in antimatter as fuel. Uh, that's just a, a suspicion. I'm not certain, but I suspect that's what it's going to take. So you, you, well, they're fairly expensive to make, and then they presumably need to be fueled with antimatter. But I need to start making a lot more antimatter anyway. So that's the thing. So maybe I'll maybe I'll do these first. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe I'll just go out and spam solar panels all over the uh, the planet because the pole the polar solar array I've been doing um, works quite nicely. So yes, next time I'm going to be building up a lot more antimatter production over here because it's not being produced quite quickly enough. I should be doing lots of science. I should be going off and getting more bucky sheets by start starting up some mining in Precipua. I should be trying out the new mining drills and I should be trying to continue to work towards actually getting a proper finish of the game rather than just getting the uh, the end game research launch uh, done. I mean, it's like in Factorio when you when you launch your rocket, you haven't finished the game. There's still stuff to do. Um, and so when, when we did the Industrial Revolution playthrough, I, I said our finishing condition was, yeah, obviously we we're going to launch a rocket, and then we we're going to do a, every single research, inclu um, including at least one of each of the infinite researches. So we did all of that, and we, we got it done, and that was, the fin that was the end. In Angel Bobs, it was similar. My goal was to do all of the research. Um, again, I think I, can't, I think there probably was infinite research in that, but uh, infinite research you only have to do one of. That's my that's my uh, rule of thumb. Uh, you can can do more if you decide you want the extra bonuses from it, but you only have to do one. Um, and then in when I played uh, actually when I played um, space exploration 0.5, I stopped after I did the victory ship. So that was technically not quite doing that. I, but by then I probably had done all the researches, I think. Um, but I didn't go off and do the archaeological. Um, victory. We're, we're planning to do that in the in the 0.6 run though, so that's going to be um, interesting, because I think that's going to be quite hard. So, I think that's um, everything I have for you today. There won't be a stream this week, I'm afraid, because I'm going to be busy on stage in the theatre, um, being an ancestor in our production of The Adams Family, so um, I'm afraid I won't be around to, to, uh, to do a stream on Wednesday, and there prob therefore there probably won't be one of these videos on um, uh, ne next weekend, because I won't have anything to report back about. Sorry about that. But the week after, everything will resume as normal, and there'll still be some videos coming out on the channel during the week, so uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed and check those out. So there'll be, yes, there'll be a Factorio tutorial video coming out on Tuesday if you're a channel supporter. If you're not a channel supporter, you'll have to wait an extra week for it, I'm afraid. Um, so, but if you want to become a channel supporter, then, yeah, become a Twitch uh, Twitch subscriber, YouTube member, or drop in a donation on Ko-Fi, and we'll give you, and you'll, and you'll get uh, channel supporter access for uh, uh, for the duration. And uh, that gets you early access to all of the, all of the non-update videos that come out. Then uh, there's going to be a GTA video on Thursday. So that'll be either last week's one if you're not a supporter, or the new one if you are a supporter. Um... And then at the weekend, I think I'm going to be able to have a Factorio video next weekend. There'll be a catch-up video then, um, and also, and then, then the week after, of course, all of the streams and videos and things will go back to, will be back to normal. Thank you for watching. Please check out the channel sponsor. That's Trefoil.be. Use the code LawrenceBlaze to get 20% off your first month. They'll host your uh, Factorio or Mindustry or Minecraft or whatever service for you, so you don't have to. And as, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.